Hello, good morning, and welcome to our chapter 2 of Biopsychology, which is Evolution, Genetics, and Experience. Okay, so don't be triggered kasi alam ko meron kayong subject sa genetics, and genetics will be uh, talk about or will be a great a big topic no in uh, in your subjects naman. So, bakit ko kailangang include ito sa inyong learnings sa Biopsychology? Because we are looking upon the biological basis of our behaviors. Then, it will this uh, topic will play a big part in our learning so we all tend to think about the things in ways that have been ingrained in us by our zeitgeist so what is zeitgeist no it is the general intellectual climate of our culture that is why this is particularly important chapter for you you see you you students are the intellectual product of zeitgeist Zeitgeist that promotes ways of thinking about biological basis of behavior that are inconsistent with facts. What does that mean? So, alam natin na meron tayong predisposed, meron tayong namana, na traits or ugali, pero minsan may incons- inconsistencies yun. No, what does that mean? Meron tayong, minsan, kung saan na lang siyang lumalabas sa atin or at other persons, kilala natin na yung family na iganito, pero siya parang naiba, no? may inconsistency. So the primary purpose of this chapter is to help you bring your thinking about biology of behavior in line with modern biopsychological science. So thinking about biology of behavior. So are you ready? So you can still get your notebook if you want to take note dahil meron akong mga babanggitin na hindi included dito sa PowerPoint. But you'll see uh, this is a video naman. So you can go back naman whenever uh, something is confusing to you okay start with the origins of dichotomous thinking so thinking about biology of behavior from dichotomies to interaction so ang ibig sabihin ng dichotomy to so i want to introduce to you cartesian dualism so if you could remember rene descartes rene descartes is very much famous in the field of mathematics Siya yung responsible or creator ng tinatawag nating Cartesian plane. Ano yung Cartesian plane? Ito yung may x-axis at y-axis. Yung may zero as origin. Minsan ginagawa pa natin ng quadrant. Quadrant 1, 2, 3, 4. So, ito yung kapag sa y-axis usually negative. Kapag x-axis it's positive. So, that is the Cartesian plane. So, however, in biology, meron din siyang contribution. So, ano po yun sir? Philosophically, we have what we call the Cartesian dualism. What does it mean? So, ayon sa Cartesian dualism of Rene Descartes, the universe is composed of two elements daw. So, it only compose, composes two elements. Ano daw yung two elements na kinocompose ng universe? So, we have the physical matter and the number two is the human mind. So, what does it mean? The physical matter which behaves in accordance to the laws of nature. So, it's a natural so natural things around us how about the human mind human mind is the soul self and the spirit which lacks physical substance it controls human behavior and obeys no natural law and is thus the purview of the church so para mas maintindihan natin physical matter is everything that is seen by, by our naked eye that is tangible present no existing that can be seen or be felt by our senses such as the sight itself no uh, yang bato sa tabi nyo, no? yang papel, yang notebook, yang phone niyo. These are the physical matter. How about how about the human mind? So hinati niya yung human mind sa tatlo. So sinasabi niya that the human mind itself is consisting of the soul, the self, and the spirit. What about these three things? So these three things are intangible. Hindi mo to mahawakan, no? Meron bang nakakahawak ng kaluluwa niya, no? Kanyang self and spirit. These three are existing, no? We all know that these three are existing, especially kapag kayo ay malapit sa church, no? Ito ang tinatawag natin purview. What does purview means? Ito yung foundation ng church, no? Meron tayong soul, meron tayong tinatawag na self, and meron tayong spirit. It lacks physical substance, hindi siya nahahawakan, and it controls human behavior and obeys no natural law. So yung pag-abide natin sa rules ng church, sa rules ng tao, no? It's our free will. So, tayo yung nagde-decide kung sas, uh, susundin natin. Pero if natural law, kung wala tayong susundin, meron tayong free will na hindi sumunod. No? But yung nature, 
the tree will be a tree you know, the rock will be a rock the stars will be star like that so I hope you understand the Cartesian dualism no meron daw two elements actually Cartesian dualism is a dichotomy so meron pa tayong tinatawag na other dichotomies that is relevant to biology or biology of behavior such as the human brain and the mind sinasabi na it is an separate entity do you agree? what do you think? so sinaseparate daw ang human mind at ang brain no? so ang utak at ang isip next is the nature and nurture so it's another dichotomy may dalawa no? bakit kaya dalawa? so kapag sinabing nature familiar na kayo nito these are the ones inherited this could be traits no? characteristics no? ways, values, etc na predisposed or pagkapanganak pa lang sa'yo meron ka na how about nurture? it is the things that we learn no? it comes from the environment ito yung something na magigain mo or ma-acquire mo sa environment so kung nature mo ay ganito it is something that is given to you from birth no? if, it's, it is, if it's nurtured it is something that you learn it is something that you are exposed to it is something that you have experienced that brought by changes so inherited and learned nature, nurture I hope uh, hindi kayo malito dyan next is the physiological or psychological I know very well that you can differentiate naman what is physiological and psychological pero to sum it up so physiological is anything that comprises the body that is tangible too no? outside no? usually biological physiological kapag physio, body no? it is this, uh, the parts of our body that we can see no? and when we say psychological we know that it is present no? itong course ninyo, psychology psychological, it is present in every day no? but you cannot see it no? meron na bang nakakita sa inyo ng psychology mga kabahan ako, pag may makita kayong psychology <laughs> so when we say psychological no? it is there it is not present it could be a state of mind it could be well-being no? It could be the behavior, no? It is not something that you can touch, but it is something that can be displayed from within. So, same as to the physical matter and the human mind. Okay, let's continue. So, before we start our lesson, I want to introduce to you the case of the man who fell out of bed. So... For you to further understand no, genetics, experience, and evolution, so I will give you this case. So remember these cases, huh? So the case of the man who fell out of bed. Okay, let's start. So if you could still remember Dr. Dr. Sachs, so siya pa rin yung magiging doktor natin dito. So let's start. When he awoke, Dr. Sachs' patient felt fine. That is until he touched the thing in the bed next to him. So ano kaya yun? It was a severed human leg, all hairy and still warm. At first, the patient was confused. No, He thought that one of the nurses must have taken it from the autopsy department and put it in his bed as a joke. So parang pinaprank siya. No? Meron yatang lokolokong nurse na nagpaprank sa akin. Ha. Tinabihan ako ng putol na pa dito. So, since he didn't take it as a funny joke or as a funny one, he was disgusted. So, he threw the leg out of the bed. But somehow, he landed on the floor with the leg attached to him. So, nagulat siya. Nung ibinabato niya na yung paa na nakatabi sa kanya, nalaglag din siya kasama nung paa. So, the patient became agitated and desperate. No? Dr. Sachs tried to comfort him and help him back into the bed. So, making one of the last effort to reduce the patient's confusion, kasi nga, nagulumihan na siya. Sachs asked him where his left leg was. So, nasa yung kaliwa mong paa? If the one attached to him wasn't it, hindi ba yan yung paa mo? Turning pale, so namutla siya. And looking like he was about to pass out, parang himatay na siya. The patient replied that he had no idea where his own leg was. Hindi ko alam kung nasa yung legs ko. It has disappeared. No? Sabi niya nawawala daw yung kanyang legs. 
So, then the diagnosis comes in. Ano sa tingin niyo yung diagnosis dito? No? Or ano sa tingin niyo yung nangyari? Does it made you think? So, without further ado, this is this. Asomatognosia. Again, it is pronounced as asomatognosia. So, asomatognosia is a deficiency on the awareness of one's own body. So, the body part was still the patient's. So, sa kanya yun. Pero bigla na lang siyang nagising, napakaramdam niya, hindi niya pa ayun, na pinaprank lang siya. No? So, this is the illness. Ito yung diagnosis ni Dr. Sachs. Napakagaling ni Dr. Sachs. Asomatognosia. A deficiency on the awareness of one's own body. No? If you're curious, so, kapag mayroong asomatognosia, uh, it typically involves damage to the right parietal lobe. No? Right parietal lobe. With the history of human evolution. So, kapag sinabi natin human evolution, ano yung pumapasok sa isip nyo? Or sino yung very famous person na kilalang kilala in the field of biology in terms of human evolution itself? Maring iba sa iyo, nakaguess na. No? But the, the person is who is responsible or very famous for this is Charles Darwin. Yes, you're right. So, pag-uusapan natin ngayon yung human evolution. So, very glimpse na naman to. Hindi naman to sobra-sobra. Pero may ipapanood ako sa inyong video later. And I hope na may sound yung video kapag pinapresent ko sa inyo. So, if you can see here. So, starting from the earliest man that we know. No? Ayan. Which looks like an ape. Which, but a primate. No? Dire-direcho hanggang sa alam na natin itsura ng tao ngayon. No? From the hominids, Homo erectus, Homo sapiens, Homo habilis, Australopithecus, the Neanderthals, hom uh, to the Homo sapiens that we know today. So, again, let's go back to Darwin's theory of evolution. So, in 1859, so he made a book. So, modern biology began on it with the publication of his book entitled On the Origin of Species. So, it was not printed in English. But it was translated as such, on the origin of species. So, meron daw siyang three assertion on evolution. Assertion or declaration regarding evolution. So, ano kaya itong tatlong to? So, this is all included in his book, On the Origin of the Species. Of species rather. So, first, documentation of evolution of fossil records through progressively recent geological layers. So, na-document niya daw yung pag-evolve ng mga fossil records no? using progressively, uh, progressively recent geological layers. So, kinumpara niya yung fossils sa recent geological layers on his time. So, next, description of the striking structural, structural similarities among living species. So, example, the human hand, the bird's wings, the cat's paws. So, yung mga similarities on the structures of the different species, pinag-compare-compare niya rin. Next, pointing out major changes that had been brought about in domestic plants and animals by programs of selective breeding. Later, i discuss ko ito. So, sige. Uh, let's look upon the four kinds of evidence supporting the theory that species evolved. Ito rin yung nakalagay uh, kanina. So, hindi ko na pala na ilagay yung pang-apat. So, first, titignan ulit natin, no? Fossil records have changed systematically through geological layers. So, what does it mean? Illustrated here is the evolution of the hominid skull. So, looking here, so this could be a skull of a Homo erectus, no? And on the right side, we have here the skull of a Homo sapiens or a modern man. Kung titignan natin, meron silang similarities, no? Uh, there is the eye socket, no? Eye socket here, no? We have here the jaw, and we have here the skull. Kung titignan natin, uh, almost similar din yung crack, but it's a little bit bigger. No? Probably because of evolution din. So, kung titignan natin din, yung position ng kanyang teeth is a little bit forward or paharap. So, what does this imply? So, tinitignan nila yung differences no? through geological layers. So, titignan nila dito, no? dito sa Homo erectus, makikita natin na merong similarity sa bone ng isang Homo sapiens. And makikita natin na may changes. And changes kasi does not occur in a blink of an eye or in a night. So, it takes millions of millions of years for evolution to take, no? 
sometimes pero there are times naman na evolution is very fast no pero looking through here makita natin na talagang may similarity sila the jaw the teeth no the eye socket the skull pero siguro may difference lang yung size at saka yung location where in here it's a little bit forward let's continue Next, we have here the major changes that have been created in domestic plants and animals by programs of selective breeding. So, ang nangyari, nagkaroon ng tinatawag natin evolution because of no, the domestication of the plants and the animals. Through what we call the selective breeding, no, selective breeding is breeding of uh, similar species with different ano bang tawag dito? types. No? For example, here we have the two dogs. These two dogs... I can assure that they are, you can call them a purebred. For example, this dog is a boxer and this is a collie. No? Uh, bakita natin na may differences sila such as the build, uh, wherein the boxer is a little bit muscular. No? The color. No? Lahat ng boxer, ganito, may brown pero may black din. Pero by physical, makita natin it's a little bit like buff up bulldog. No? Na medyo athletic kung titignan natin. Here, the bearded collie, bearded collie naman, makikita natin, they are full of hair, no? And they are a little bit, what do you call this? Uh, dark, black, hairy, no? And a little bit bigger face, no? Bakit kaya sila naging ganito? No? Because of selective breeding, no? Yung mga alam natin ngayon na pure breeds ng animals, even yung Shih Tzu, they are combinations of many, many different breeds of dog, no? Until na-reach nila yung point na meron silang nagawang isa na nag-fit sa kanilang gusto, no? Tapos, after that, they made two and they made them copulate, they mate and afterwards, lahat na ng kanilang napuprus na breed ay kamukha na nila. Then, you will create a new breed, such as the Shih Tzu. Here, we have the boxer, here, the bearded collie, no? Pero ngayon nga, di ba, makikita natin, meron tayong mga minimix na types of dogs, such as uh, yung corgi, minimix minsan sa German Shepherd, no? At marami pang iba. <laughs> Kaya kung meron kayong dog sa house, no? is it pure breed, is it mixed breed, or is it Ascal or Aspin? Aspins, I think, is combination too of many different breeds. No? Ayan, let's continue. We also have here another proof or evidence. Evolution have, have been or has been observed in progress. For example, this type of evolution happens in a very short time and it, it was very fast. For example, an 18-month drought or tagtuyot on one of the Galapagos Islands left only large, difficult-to-eat seeds and increased the big size in one species of finch. So, finch is a type of bird. So, usually, this type of bird, finch, eats uh, small seeds, you know, bird seeds, maybe small nuts. You know? But because of the drought, hindi nakasurvive yung mga plants. Ang natira lang at nakasurvive is yung mga malalaki at difficult-to-eat na seeds. Ang nangyari, within the span of 18 months, no, nagkaroon ng change yung big size ng same animal, which is the finch. No? Bakit nag-change? Para makapag-adapt sa existing food na meron no? for survival. Ang nangyari, no, may part ng island na, nag, na natuyo na mas malalaki yung big ng finch. At may part ng island na hindi naman natuyo na similar pa rin yung size ng finch. But they are both finch evolution takes place and this happened to the beaks of the finch. Later on, lahat ng anak nila malalaki na yung beak. No? Kung titignan nyo, parang hindi halata pero makita nyo na may increased size dito sa upper part. No? Baka magulat kayo, nyog na yung binubuksan yan. <laughs> so, we also have different types of birds naman that have big beaks. No? De it depends on the food that they eat. We have the tokan, no? flamingo, o ano pa ba, eagle. No? Iba-iba yung mga beak sizes nila. So, also, the fourth evidence, there are striking structural similarities among diverse uh, living species, such as here, between a human arm and bat's wing. What does that mean? Iba man yung physical appearance nila, pero if we would look inside or study it, no, sa kaloob-looban, makikita natin na may similarity sa kanyang structures. So, wala lang tayong flap ng wings, no, pero ang bones nila ay similar pa rin sa bones natin. What does it mean, sir? So, we still have here the humerus, no? We still have the radius and the ulna, no? The radius and the ulna. And we have here the carpals and the metacarpals. Carpals and metacarpals. Though iba yung tura nila, they are the same bones as us. Pero it adapted or changed because of the way they live. Hindi naman, hindi naman tayo lumilipad, di ba? 
So why would we adapt to have wings? So because of the bat, because the bat itself is the only mammal that can fly, so nag-adjust yung kanyang body figure, makita nyo, lumipis yung kanyang humerus para makerry niya during flight. So pero kung titignan, saan lang bones similar na similar pa rin. Humerus, radius, ulna, carpals, and metacarpals. I hope you understand that. Eh? If you are confused or nalilito kayo sa mga dinidiscuss ko, you can always go back to the previous slide or the video itself. Let's so, here is the video that I want to show you. So, I don't know if mapiplay ko or my sound, pero I hope so. <laughs> and, buhasan natin yung video and let me speak na lang. Buhasan natin volume rather. So, Ayan, medyo malakas siya. So, human have had gone in a very long evolution which is 30, 3.8 million in the process from the primordial puddle to the modern day. So, here's how humans now evolved for the first, from the first life. So, let's start to the origins of life. So, we have he here the bacteria, the prokaryote uh, with tail. So, dito nyo makikita yun ago sa kaliwa. The cyanobacteria, na? the compound of the cells. The eukaryote, you are already familiar with this, an animal cell. No? Uh, then we have the coanoflagellate, no? animal cell with tail. Hindi na babasahin na at dahil mahirap siya masahin. Latinomentes, flatworms. So here, the pitaya, the first fin animal. Hygrichtus. Toyotuloy. Nata, mga siyang snake. No, they are the hat fishes. Ito po mag-anak ng tatakito. Tatakodermy, the first bone fishes. Sophilastis. My cartilage, the fish. Kamag anak ng shark. The colican, na hanggang ngayon nabubuhay pa rin. They are living fossils. No? Ayan. So, bony fishes yan. Ayan. We have the tiktalik. No? Connected sa lung fish. The first fish with lungs. Lungs. The Acanthos tega. Uh, We're going to be amphibian. Ito makikita nyo. Ayan. May pumunta na sila sa land. Hyderpeton. Now we go to the era of amphibians. From land, I'm uh, from sea, from water to land. And the lizard, the first uh, reptiles. Ayan. Reptiles and birds. So, dito na rin yung mga dinosaurs. Ayan, ko ay paano pronounce yan? Tinosopus. And the first, uh, Chagnathus, Mammals. So, pupunta na tayo dito, makikita natin na create na yung mga bagong marsupials. No? Para silang rats. No? Mga Maya. They are types of rodents. Noong unang panahon na, extinct na lahat ng to. So, mm -hmm. Tuloy. Types of shoes. Okay, lemurs. Uh, ganyan sila. Tarshears, yung mga small monkeys. They are the old world monkeys. Sila may mga tail. And here we have the new world monkeys. Ito yung mga monkeys na may tail. Walang tail, rather. Ayan. And then yung monkeys, naging apes. Nagpunta sila sa land. No? Or ano, Fithicus. And they start to walk na rin. No? Eventually. No? Or roaring. No? Artificus. No? Or Salufithicus. Ayan na, Homo erectus or the tool man. No? To the Neanderthal. Ito yung mga nakita sa Arctic and Antarctic. And the Homo sapiens or the people of today. So, hindi na nilagay dito lahat-lahat. Pero, ayan, I hope you have a glimpse. No? So, Tech Insider. You can watch more in YouTube naman actually about human evolution. And you'll see many videos naman regarding it. No? So, buti na lang. Uh, Na-play pa rin yung video kahit this is a presentation. So, yan. Let's continue. Hmm, saan na tayo? So, now let's go to the fundamental genetics. So, pinuntan natin evolution, Charles Darwin. Now, we go to the fundamental genetics. So, Darwin's discoveries were wildly acclaimed, no? As breakthrough in the existing knowledge during his years. But understanding why specific species have possibilities of having offspring, having different qualities, behaviors, and appearance, and passing of these traits were questions for him. Bakit kaya pareho naman silang, ano, white na dog, pero nung pinanganak nila, may brown. Parang ganun. No? 
or ba, for example, yung mga tao, pareho silang blue eye, no? Yung mama at papa. Pero pinanganak nila brown yung eye. Pero anak naman talaga nila. Walang salisihang naganap, no? <laughs> so, hindi pa yun ma-identify ni Darwin kung bakit ganun. So, ano kaya nangyari? Bakit may mga ganun? Or bakit yung specific trait, no? Ah, ang mga magulang ng taong ito, ganito, kilala silang ganyan. Pero bakit yung anak nila, parang may kakaiba. May something wrong, no? Naligaw? <laughs> Naiba? So, pero anak pa rin naman talaga siya, no? Biological, legitimate. So, ano kaya yung mag-explain? Or sino kaya yung dapat mag-explain? So, I want to introduce to you to an Augustinian monk, which is known in the name Gregor Mendel. So, he is the father of the fundamental genetics or the modern genetics itself. This is where manuscript of an unknown Augustinian monk, no, Gregor Mendel, emerge which contain the answers. So, totoo. Paano nangyari yun? So, si Gregor Mendel yung nag-explain. So, ano kayong ginamit niyang organisms para explain yun? Alam niyo ba? So, I think may idea na kayo. Yung iba, uh, napagdaanan na ito. We have the Mendelian genetics. The inheritance in pea plants. So, wala man ang ginamit niya. Ang ginamit niya ay peas. No? If you're familiar with muncher, no, yan, green peas yan. No? Kung familiar kayo dun sa nilalagay sa mixed vegetables, ayan, green peas. Saan pa ba? Sa igado. <laughs> green peas yan. So, yun yung pinag-aralan ni Gregor Mendel. So, ayan, we are talking about them now. <laughs> so, Gregor Mendel made a term called dichotomous trait. Trait was already existing word before. So, dichotomous daw. If you could remember when we say dichotomous, we have two. No, ang ibig sabihin to, two. It occur in one form or another, but never in combination. For example, the seed color. So, yun daw yung dichotomous traits. For example, green yung peas. No? Lahat ng bunga ay green. Or white yung peas, or yellow yung peas. Lahat ay yellow, lahat ay white, ganun. So, we have what we call also the true breeding lines. True breeding lines. These are breeding lines which interbred members always produce offspring with same trait generation per generation. So, kapag ikaw ay nag-breed uh, ng dalawang husky, expected mo ng anak ng husky ay husky din. No? Kahit paulit-ulit mo silang i-breed at i-breed, hindi ka makakuha ng chihuahua. No? Magulat ka nilang kung may nakasalis eh, kung maabot ng chihuahua yung husky. <laughs> Pero, hindi yon. Kapag true breeding lines, no? Kapag similar member siya at in-interbred mo siya, similar pa rin yung makukuha mong offspring. That is called true breeding lines. Next, we have the dominant traits. What does it mean when we say dominant traits? These are traits that appear in all first generation offspring and more visible. So, familiar na kayo sa dominant traits and recessive traits. So, pag dominant traits, ito yung mas obvious, mas nakikita. For example, sa kayo mismo, mga anak ng inyong mga magulang, no? meron kayong makikita ang dominant traits na makikita nyo rin sa parents nyo. For example, makapalang kilay, makapalang labi, no? ma- 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 makintab yung buhok, no? matangkad. These are dominant traits. Kapag ang parents nyo ay matangkad, no? at ikaw ay matangkad, it is a dominant trait that is passed through you. But there is also what we call the recessive traits. Usually, recessive traits all only appeared in about one quarter of the second generation of spring. So, second generation of spring ni siya. Hindi siya yung unang na-produce. No? Pero it could be one quarter pa or 25% of the time. So, kung apat yung anak nila, malamang sa malamang, 75% or yung tatlo sa kanila, no? makikita sila, sa kanilang mabuting dominant traits. For example, ang dominant traits sa kanila ay kayo manggi ang kanilang kulay ng balat. Yung tatlo doon, no? or pwedeng apat pa nga eh, ay lahat kayo manggi. Pero kapag may isa sa kanila na medyo maputi, no? medyo may naligaw, pero anak pa rin nila yon, it could be a recessive trait. Ah, recessive trait to. No? Ito yung nangyari no? na lumabas dun sa ikaapat na anak. For example, example lang. So, one out of four, no? it could be our recessive trait would emerge. Pero not all the time kasi andun pa rin yung dominant traits. And when we say dominant traits, mas madali silang mag-emerge because they are more dominant. Let's continue. So, we also have what we call the phenotypes. Phenotypes naman, these are the organism's observable traits. Ito yung mga characteristics na binanggit natin kanina. No? Phenotypes, uh, it could be the hair color, the eye color, the skin color. No? It could be the height. No? Ayan. And we have uh, also what we call the genotypes. These are traits that can be passed on the offspring. For example, uh, ano ba? 
traits pa rin siya that can be passed to an offspring. For example, kilala yung family nila na ma- mapagbigay, no? Sa future, yung anak nila, ganun din yung nakalakihang trait or ganun din yung uh, makikita, no? Mavivisualize na traits niya, mapagbigay yung bata kasi ganun din yung parents niya, nung mga bata sila. Or nung bata siya, makikita mo na malapad yung balikat niya. Tapos nung yung offspring, ganun din, makikita na malapad din yung balikat. It could be a genotype. So, huwag kayong malito dito kasi phenotypes can be genotypes too. No? So, meron tayong four ideas in Mendelian Theory of Segregation. Medyo complicated to one way or another, pero I hope na maintindihan nyo. Kapag hindi nyo siya maintindihan, you can go back to my videos or have additional researches and readings regarding this. No? So, because I will include this in the exercise. So, first, there are two kinds daw of inherited factor for each dichotomous trait. For example, we have the brown seed factor and white seed factor. So, ano ibig sabihin nun, sir? So, kapag si parent, no? for example, parent P, no? yung parent na P's, meron siyang brown seed factor at white seed factor. Pero, isa dun sa mga factor na yun is more dominant. So, dichotomous. Hindi ibig sabihin nito, wala siya nito. No? Meron siyang brown seed factor, meron din siyang white seed factor, existing to sa kanyang genes. It is a trait that he have too. No? But, may mas dominant. But, andun pa rin yun. No? It's still there. Next, each organism possess two genes for each of its dichotomous trait. So, under we have here the example which is two white seed gene and two brown seed gene. So, kunyari sa parent, no, meron siyang two white seed gene. Yung uh, mother, yung father, meron ding two brown seed gene. So, two genes of the same traits are called allele. No? For example, kung letters yan, no, big letter B, B at saka B, they are allele. They are two uh, they are two traits or uh, two genes rather no pero same trait they are called allele so two identical gene trait is called homozygous while two different genes of a trait is called heterozygous what does it mean so since it is existing that there are two genes for each dichotomous trait pwedeng yung parent ang isa niyang trait ay white gene at saka brown gene no Tapos, yung isang parent ay dalawang white gene. Pwede ganun. No? Pwede rin yung isa or both sila na meron silang uh, allele, meron silang heterozygous or different no? na trait, which is a brown gene and white gene. No? And another sa mother, white gene and brown gene. No? Pwede nag exist siya. O, so, para mas maintindihan natin, later on, meron akong ipapakitang chart sa inyo. Nakakalito yun eh. So, Number three, or letter C, he proposed that one of the two kinds of genes for each dichotomous trait dominates the other heterozygous organism. For example, nabanggit ko na ito kanina. Pea plants with brown gene and a white seed gene have both seeds, have brown seeds rather, because brown seeds dominates white seeds. So kahit may, yung mama ay merong brown gene at saka white gene, pero since mas dominant si brown gene, brown gene yung maging offspring niya. No? Kung ganun din si daddy. No, si Daddy Peace. No? Kapag si Daddy Peace din ay may white gene and brown gene, pero mas dominant si brown gene, brown gene yung magiging anak nila. So, because it is more dominant. So, he proposed that for each dichotomous trait, each organism inherits one of the father's two factors and one of its mother's two factors. Okay. So, mahate yung traits, no? So, tigdalawa yung parent, no? Pero kapag pinag-combine, mahate yung two factors na yun. So, paano yun mahati, sir? No? For example, yung from egg cell to sperm cell, nag-combine sila, combination siya ng cells. So, para mas maitindahan natin, so, these are the different traits or characteristics of the pea plants that Gregor Mendel have studied. So, let's look upon here. So, we have here the seed shape. Under the seed shape, we have the round and we have the wrinkled. So, usually, round ang nakikita natin, no? And na-wrinkle lang sila kapag naluto na. Pero usually, round ang shape ng isang pea. Next, we also have the seed color, which is yellow and green. And usually, ang pea na nakikita natin ay green, no? Yung muncher nga, eh. Uh, their flowers is a little bit different. Uh, this came from the writings of Gregor Mendel, ha? If you are a little bit mm, confused. So, sa flower down ng pea, it could be a purple or white, No? Pod shape, inflated or constricted, may hangin. Ito medyo siksik. Pod color, yellow or green. No? 
flower position axial dito sa gitna or terminal sa dulo. It could be uh, tall or dwarf. So this could be the different traits that would be combined in many different combinations. So para mas maintindihan pa lalo, no? Let's continue. So this is the chart. So for example, uh, this is the father plant and this is the mother plant. So makita niyo naman yung sign. So si mother plant at saka si father plant, they both have they both have two specific traits, no? One of these is a little bit dominant than the other. For example, dito sa mother plant, dominant yung brown color, ay yung violet color, tapos recessive yung white color. Sa father din, dominant yung uh, violet color at recessive yung white color. No? So, ang kanilang first generation offspring, makita natin, ang lalabas, it's violet. Kasi first generation. No? So, kapag kinumbay naman natin, so B and B. So, makita natin yan. So, kapag uh, dominant trait ng father at recessive trait ng mother ang nag-combine, no? ang lalabas pa rin ay B and B. <laughs> ang lalabas pa rin ay yung mas dominant na color. No? or dominant trait which is violet so here then dominant yung sa mother tapos recessive yung sa father violet pa rin pero there instance or for example 25% of chance no, na ang magkocombine is the recessive these two and kapag nagcombine ang recessive no, dyan lalabas yung other color which is white nagcombine yung recessive traits nila no? usually nangyari to sa second generation these are second generation and usually, uh, nasa ano siya, uh, 25% of the time lang. Dahil lalabas pa rin usually, 75% na dominant trait pa rin yung makikita natin. So again, here are the phenotypes, the observable traits. Ayan, makikita natin dyan. Violet, 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 white. No? So 1 out of 4, it's white. It's the recessive trait. And here, the genotypes, yung naipasa ng parents. Makikita natin kung it's still color. Ayan, makikita natin combination. So, it's so pure na dominant, no? Ito, combination ng dominant and recessive, but still, nanalo ang dominant, kaya violet. And here, combination of two recessive, kaya lumabas yung white. So, I hope you understand the inheritance. Okay. So, this time, I will give you a crash course on selective breeding. So, para mas maintindihan natin kung ano nga ba ang selective breeding. So, selective breeding is also called as artificial selection. So, proseso ito kung saan nagbibreed ang mga tao ng halaman o hayop for a particular genetic characteristics. Actually, this is being done for thousands of years. Pagsimula nung nagbreed tayo ng food crops na naani natin from wild plants at nung nag-start na din tayo mag-domesticate ng animals. So, 10,000 years na ang nakakaraan. So, this is a time that man made a transition from being hunter-gatherers to farmer and growers. That time, di na natin need na mag-wander around no? or mag-hunt para magkaroon ng food supply. So, if uh, you are familiar with wheat or yung trigo, mga beans, uh, peas, yung green peas, rice, patatas, yung mga, yan, yung mga root crops natin, lahat yun ay nakultivate ng mga sinaunang tao. So, nagsimula din tayong magpaamo o mag-tame ng mga hayo para sa gatas, karne, uh, at balat na ginagamit dati sa taglamig. Yung mga naunang na nag-domesticate ng animals or yung mga naunang na domesticate ng animals ay kambing, goat, so manok, at saka tupa. So goat, chicken, and sheep sila yung mga nauna. Tapos sumunod na yung mga mas malalaking hayop tulad ng uh, kabayo, uh, baka, or yung mga ox na ginamit noon na pang-araro at para sa paglalakbay no? for traveling. Because of that, a few people na lang yung need na mag-provide ng madaming food at dahil naging predictable na yung food, it led to increase in population. Kaya nagsimula na mag-travel yung tao, no? makipag-trade or makipag-barter at makipag-communicate sa iba pang mga tao. Uh, nagkaroon ng maliliit na grupo yung tao hanggang naging village yun, then naging city. And usually, mga city na yun, malalapit yun sa mga fields, sa mga halamanan kung saan nandroon yung products nila. Kaya naman, no, yung civilization ay na-found or they are founded upon selective breeding. So, how does selective breeding work pa talaga? So, parents from a desired population are selected from a mixed population and are bred together. From their offspring, 
those with the desired characteristics, are then also bred together. This continued over many generations until all the offspring show the desired characteristics. Isipin nyo na lang lahat ng uh, breed ng dog na meron tayo ngayon, lahat ito ay selectively bred mula sa common na wolf ancestor. No? Okay. So this time, I will give you a crash course on selective breeding. So para mas maintindihan natin kung ano nga ba ang selective breeding. So selective breeding is also called as artificial selection. So proseso ito kung saan nagbe-breed ang mga tao ng halaman o hayop for a particular genetic characteristics. Actually, this is being done for thousands of years. Magsimula nung nag-breed tayo ng food crops na naani natin from wild plants at nung nag-start na din tayo mag-domesticate ng animals. So 10,000 years na ang nakakaraan. So this is a time that man made a transition from being hunter-gatherers to farmer and growers. That time, di na natin need na mag-wander around no? or mag-hunt para magkaroon ng food supply. So, if uh, you are familiar with wheat or yung trigo, mga beans, uh, peas, yung green peas, rice, patatas, yung mga, yan, yung mga root crops natin, lahat yun ay nakultivate ng mga sinaunang tao. So, nagsimula din tayong magpaamo o mag-tame ng mga hayo para sa gatas karne uh, at balat na ginagamit dati sa taglamig. Yung mga naunang na nag-domesticate ng animals or yung mga naunang na-domesticate ng animals ay kambing, goat, so manok, at saka tupa. So goat, chicken, and sheep sila yung mga nauna. Tapos sumunod na yung mga mas malalaking hayop tulad ng uh, kabayo, uh, baka, or yung mga ox na ginamit noon na pang-araro at para sa paglalakbay no? for traveling. Because of that, a few people na lang yung need na mag-provide ng madaming food at dahil naging predictable na yung food, it led to increase in population. Kaya nagsimula na mag-travel yung tao, no? makipag-trade or makipag-barter at makipag-communicate sa iba pang mga tao. Uh, nagkaroon ng maliliit na grupo yung tao hanggang naging village yun, then naging city. And usually, mga city na yun, malalapit yun sa mga fields, sa mga halamanan kung saan nandroon yung products nila. Kaya naman, no, yung civilization ay na-found or they are founded upon selective breeding. So, how does selective breeding work pa talaga? So, parents from a desired population are selected from a mixed population and are bred together. From their offspring, those with the desired characteristics are then also bred together. This continued over many generations until all the offspring show the desired characteristics. Isipin nyo na lang lahat ng... Uh, breed ng dog na meron tayo ngayon, lahat ito ay selectively bred mula sa common na wolf ancestor. No? 